Detonate Dead Elementalist is a great all round league starter. If you want one build that can do a large variety of content, anything from easy Atlas clearing to downing the bosses all on budget gear. With a ton of damage coming from your skill gems and the level of the zone deciding your corpse HP, this is a great league starter for those who don't mind a few extra buttons for an easy travel into the end game. With all the DD variations out there, Ignite is still a great option without the need to purchase sought after transfigured gems to push into the end game. Looking at you all cock DDers, okay that's probably where I'm going to be at, or DD Necros. Ignite's still a great option though, with the bossing being fairly simple too, where you just fish for large ignites and refresh them with an Arcanist brand setup. Plus, you've still got Ignite Prolif and some explosions with obliteration, which is always sick as hell. Your mapping playstyle is as simple as casting Desecrate and then casting Detonate Dead. Ignites will prolif, and on tanky rares or bosses, you'll cast Arcanist Brand, which triggers your utility, and in between packs, you just pop your Divine Blessing Haste. On bosses, all you've got to do is maintain an Arcanist Brand, which applies your curses and refreshes your highest damage Ignite thanks to Defiled Forces. Then all you've got to do is walk under the boss to scorch them, press your focus button to shock them, and fish for that large ignite by spamming desecrate dd and eventually vol dd once you have that big ignite just stay near the boss make sure your arcanist brand doesn't fall off and maintain to refresh your ignite this builds defenses in the end game are 94 evade chance 100 spell suppression 25 spell block shock and freeze immunity 45k armor 20 percent chill on everything you hit with room for purity instead of grace on bosses. You can swap a flask out for the new max res one too, depending on what boss you're doing. And in the end game, I've added a bossing tree that you can opt to use for divine flesh with the armor used against chaos damage mastery. You can also slot in a defiance of destiny if your damage is comfortable enough and if you can afford one and they didn't do nothing to its drop rate. DD Elementalist scales his damage through a combination of Corpse Life from a level 20 Desecrate, a Katava Herald in your Corpse Pool, Fire Damage, Fire Dob Multi, Scaling Ailments through Non-Damage Ailment Effect, and Defiled Forces to refresh your Ignites. If you're a bit new and you want a hand-holding guide to accompany the hand-holding video, head on over to my Maxwell article, which will hold your hand step-by-step step through the entire leveling and gearing process. Also, sub up, fuckers! Press that login button and the little red button to boot and I won't play CF this league start. I swear, guys, all it takes is some subs and I won't play. That's it. That's it. That's all it takes. An important leveling tip is scooping the flat spell damage craft from behind Diala in Act 3, that woman that gives you the amulet. Just go back there and put that on your scepters. At level 2, use Rolling Magma linked with Arcane Surge. Level 4, picking up Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wall, and Frost Blink. Use Rolling Magma, Ellie Prolif, and at level 8, add Combustion now. Swap Frost Blink for Flame Dash at level 10. At level 16, use a Herald of Thunder, Herald of Ash, and pick up Wave of Conviction for its exposure. And at level 24, use Magma Orb, Ellie Prolif, Combustion, and added Lightning or Faster Casting. Somewhere around level 28, you'll swap to an Armageddon Brand and Cremation setup, linking Armageddon Brand with Ellie Prolif, Combustion, and faster casting or added lightning. You'll use cremation as well with LMP, Ellie Focus, and Cruelty. Use Desecrate alongside cremation. Cast flammability and wave of conviction on tanky monsters. With your auras being determination and Herald of Ash. And at level 38, your new Armageddon brand setup will be Ignite Proliferation, Combustion, and Immolation. With cremation being LMP, Ellie Focus, and Immolation. And this is what you'll use all the way until you reach maps where you're going to respec into Detonate Dead. For this respec, you'll want cast speed on a scepter and amulet, a level 17 or higher desecrate, a vol Detonate Dead, and a Kitava's Herald in your corpse pool, which is obtained by using Raise Spectre and a Desecrate in Act 10 Canal and holding A to find and summon the Kitava Herald. That's it. Now you can throw the Raise Spectre gem out. Your first ascendancy choice is Shaper of Flames, followed by Mastermind of Discard and Heart of Destruction, all providing you with a lot of elemental and ignite damage. Lastly, in Uberlab, obtain Bastion of Elements for a nice elemental damage bubble shield. 
Just as a quick note for the gearing section, make sure in the end game that if you're going to use the bossing tree with divine flesh, that you cap your chaos resistance and squeeze as much as you need into all of your gear for that bossing setup. All right, for your weapon, just start with a scepter with cast speed and a fire damage over time multiplier craft from unveiled weapons. Upgrade this to an obliteration wand to increase your clear speed. Or if you prefer damage, pick up an oscillating scepter spammed with misery essence until damage over time multi and then multi mod. Your starter shield should have suppression and resistances. Upgrading to an it that fled unveiled craft on a high suppression res and life base. Finally ending with as much packed in res and life with the it that fled craft as you can manage. Your starter helmet can be Elevor, giving some nice early survival, eventually upgrading into a Corel Unveil crafted suppression and res helmet, with cast speed and fizz taken as fire as your implicit, squeezing in more resistance, life, and suppress into the slot, and swapping the cast speed for cold to spells to take advantage of the cold mastery for minimum chills in the endgame. Your body armor will start with suppression on an armor and evasion base and craft the Gravitious Unveiled Fizz Shift modifier. Upgrade this by shoving a suffix on the slot and getting some extra armor and evasion rating. Finishing with the Gravitious Craft and Determination plus Generic Aura Effect Implicits. Your starter gloves will be just resistance and life, upgrading them with suppression and the exposure implicit which allows you to later swap Wave of Conviction out for Flame Surge in your Arcanist brand setup. Finish it up with a lot of resistance, some suppression, life, and the unique enemy Fire Dot Multicraft plus Fire Exposure implicit on your gloves. Your starter boots will just be standard life and res with the move speed plus cannot be chilled craft, upgrading to suppression, life, res, and the scorch implicit. Finally, opting for boots with the unveiled effect of non-damage ailments suppression, resistance, and the unique enemy Scorch Implicit, which gives you a little bit of extra Scorch time on bosses. Your first amulet should have cast speed and resistance, a stat base you need with crafted life or res, which you'll then upgrade to a dot multi or cast speed amulet with more life and res with the non-damage ailment craft and the anointment ash, frost, and storm requiring two crimson and a sepia oil. You'll keep this into the end game or swap this out for Defiance of Destiny if you'd like more defense at the cost of some damage. Early game rings are just an amethyst base with res and life, getting a death rush for faster mapping. A shock with nearby focus unveiled crafted onto a resistance and life amethyst will be your second ring. In the end game, you'll pick up a replica ember wake and catalyze it for its faster ignite damage and squeeze as much dex and res you need into the second ring slot finishing this with the shock to majorly boost your damage. Your first belt should prioritize the energy shield regen craft to ensure you have a comfortable play style. Fill it with life and resistances, later upgrading the life and res as well as the base to a crystal belt. And in the end game, you'll swap this for a Stygian with resistance, life, and the energy shield regen craft, allowing you an abyss jewel with phasing on kill. Your flasks are silver, jade, granite, and quicksilver rolled with cast speed, armor, evasion rating, and reduced effect of curses on you using an instant bleed removal divine flask. Your first jewel should be careful planning to help your dexterity costs, later getting a brutal restraint for dex and evasion rating, and a watcher's eye with flat evade chance to boost your survival against attacks. Lastly, for a bossing swap, you'll use a glorious vanity of Zabakwa and take the divine flesh keystone with cap chaos res to boost your elemental mitigation. And before you get a Stygian Vice, feel free to use a Phasing on Kill Abyss Jewel somewhere in a jewel socket on your tree before the endgame jewels and your endgame belt so that you have phasing while you map. For your skill gems, your Vol DD will be Ignite Prolif, Unbound Ailment, Cruelty, and Swift Affliction, adding burning damage for your sixth link and upgrading them all to Awakened in the endgame. Your defensive auras are Determination, Grace, Defiance Banner, and Tempest Shield, swapping Grace for a Purity if you're doing endgame pinnacle bosses and want the extra max res, and a Defiance Banner for a Dread Banner linked with Awakened Generosity in the endgame. 
Use Molten Shell, linked with cast when damage taken at all times. And Shield Charge, linked with faster attacks. Use the Desecrate, linked with faster casting and Flame Dash. And a Divine Blessing, linked with Haste and Inspiration early on. Dropping the Inspiration in the endgame and swapping the Haste for Malevolence on Pinnacle Bosses. At the start, you'll have to self-cast your Flame Surge and keep Wave of Conviction in an Arcanist brand setup until you get Exposure Gloves where you'll then link Arcanist Brand with Ellie Weakness, Flammability, and Flame Surge. Your early game tree is a generic Armageddon Brand Cremation Witch Tree, grabbing Fire and Ignite damage and reaching left to Templar for Elemental Overload, Aura Effect, Elemental and Life Nodes, and reaching right for Eldritch Battery, Suppression, and Hybrid Life plus Energy Shield Nodes. In the mid game, you'll flesh out the tree with cast speed, damage, fast strike knights, and additional curse combined with defiled forces to refresh your ignites on enemies you curse. Keeping that fat ignite on bosses with your Arcanist brand setup. Your end game tree will be either mapping or bossing variant. The mapping uses grace and dread banner combined with a brutal restraint and aura effect on that brutal restraint nodes with evasion rating to reach 94 evade chance combined with energized armor on the left side of Templar for big armor, while the bossing tree will drop some armor and go divine flesh and use the armor against chaos mastery for a little extra elemental mitigation and some mitigation against Ellie Pen. For further upgrades, you can swap to a CI Aegis version and farm some Sims or any other difficult content, or you can use any other corpse skill on Witch or any Ignite on Elementalist. This should more than set you up with whatever currency you need for a 6 second build or for you to be able to accomplish your challenges, overcome your bosses, and have a fun fucking time on League Start. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, thank you. I'll see you guys later. Bye.